Welcome or welcome back to Sweet OP. I'm Zui and I hope you enjoy today's video. But before we get right into it, I'm obligated to remind you to, to click either the like or dislike button, commenting something down below and of course sharing the video after you finished watching it. If you have any suggestions or ideas for a story, my Discord link is in my link tree that is down in the description, as well as my Patreon and Ko-fi for any donations you may want to send my way. Anyways, let's get right into it. Working as the assistant to the owner and manager of the mega pizzaplex Amir was an interesting affair. Not that anything scandalous happened between you and your boss, after all he was married. But what made it so interesting was the simple fact that the robots treated you like royalty. Of course, you didn't mind that. Who would? It was very late in the evening, around the time the day shift was switching to the night shift, when you went down into the bowels of the pizzaplex. It was your weekly inventory check. Usually, you did this with on-duty engineer Kevin. The portly mechanic had become your most trusted co-worker, due to his joyful demeanor, friendly smile and diligent work routine. Plus, his four-year-old son Jason was a delight to be around. However, tonight Kevin was working off-site, making adjustments to animatronics in a different franchise. So it was just you down in the dusty halls of the maintenance tunnels that connected every part of the pizzaplex with one another. As you walked, the droning of the ventilation system, your own footsteps and your heartbeat being the only things you heard, it made you feel watched. But you knew if you sped up your footsteps, your own walking would begin to sound alien and made you think you were being hunted down. Could this be considered claustrophobia? To distract yourself, you pondered. Well, clearly you had some issue being down here. Hmm. Thinking about it, your apartment was quite spacious, but the bathroom was crammed and you did like taking a full one hour bath twice a week. Did that count? After all, you were never afraid in there. Hmm... Were there exceptions? Were you looking at this too broadly? Come to think of it, your mouth began to feel a bit dry. No, 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 no. You needed to focus. This sinking feeling of dread and losing control over your own thoughts... No, no, no. That... that was just your imagination, wasn't it? You turned a corner and almost fell over a step. You could just barely catch yourself on a crate. Blinking, you look down at your shaking feet. Oh god, you almost just died. Well, maybe. Probably? Then again, most definitely this was your last day on Earth, wasn't it? You would die in a rotten place like the goddamn maintenance tunnels. You just wanted to sit down. Of course, not here. The atrium. Next to the stage, while the animatronics tuned their instruments and did their comedy routine. Yeah, that sounded nice. You sighed, your own voice bouncing back and forth against the cold concrete. Why were you doing this alone again? Sure, Kevin might be busy, but the dish of cup was still here. He could have accompanied you. But knowing him, Brian probably distracted you every second you were writing stuff down. Maybe the night guard? Mm, no. Spending time alone with the Russian guy was probably just as scary as being down here alone. And Amir? <laughs> The guy was going to a class reunion. Plus, it would be embarrassing to ask your boss to hold your hand through this. You looked up as suddenly an idea had come to you. A robot? Of course. You could have asked the robot to come. 
in this moment, while you were distracted by your own thoughts of mediocrity and self-doubt, it happened. An incredible, sharp pain shook your entire being as something penetrated your foot. You screamed in agony, immediately losing balance and falling forward. Your fall just barely caught by your outstretched hands, skin shaving against the metal floor as your body tensed up from the shock. Your hands hurt, your face hurt. The knee that had hit the ground first hurt a lot. But most of all, your foot. The seething pain that had penetrated your flesh mere seconds ago the hot droplets of blood pouring out of the wound. A sickening feeling of fear, pain and childish panic. You knew what had happened. Of course. It wasn't the first time in your life that you stepped in something. Last time it was a glass shard. Now, it was a nail. Still though, that didn't change a thing. Desperately you crawled up to the grimy wall and leaned against it. Now in a sitting position did you catch your breath properly. You are breathing heavily, your heart beating louder than it ever did before. What was that thought earlier? You were definitely going to die here. How ironic. You gulped and looked down at yourself. Your employee uniform was dirtied by the floor, your legs shaking, especially your left one. And as you lifted it to get a better look at your foot, you almost immediately fainted. The thick needle pointed out of your shoe. You yelped and pressed your hand over your mouth. If you'd heard yourself scream, that would be the end, truly. You'd never be able to think clearly. What should you do? You were too scared to pull it out. You had seen those videos about pulling out an arrow. Plus, you were so deep down in the goddamn maintenance tunnels. You couldn't hop that. And surely not only the dirt from the needle, but also the dirt from the tunnel itself would get in the wound. And then, you could no longer hold it. Thick bile made its way up your throat, and you vomited all over yourself. Disgusting, sour globs of half-digested food. Thankfully, you didn't remain like this for long, as your brain could no longer process what was happening. You fainted. The darkness that surrounded you gave way to confusion. So this is what it was like to be knocked out, huh? It was less dramatic than you expected. If anything, you thought being knocked out felt like being asleep. Or maybe this was your knocked out dream? Probably born out of the fear that while you were walking in pitch black darkness, your real body was lying in its own vomit in a damp, dark, echoey place. You regained your conscious very slowly. At first it was a pleasant feeling. Fading away out of your dark dream, and the first few seconds you were alive and awake in your real body. That was truly a nice feeling. Until the pain returned. By now reduced luckily to a sharp sting, but you also noticed something else. The fact that you were moving. 
someone was gently holding you. You grunted as you opened your eyes, and then you sharply inhaled. Your body was being held up by Freddy Fazbear, one of the animatronics. You gulped and shivered, his eyes suddenly focusing in on you. Good evening, Miss Secretary. I apologize for your accident on the behalf of the company. Uh-huh, was your meek and pained reply. I also regret to inform you that as of right now, the needle remains inside of you, as I haven't gotten to the nurse station yet. You groaned. Please, if possible, ignore the pain. You are free to talk to me, if that helps, of course. Yeah, you murmured. How? Why did... How did you find me? Freddy's ears perked up. The night guard noticed you haven't clocked out yet. He then checked the security camera footage and realized you haven't left. He activated our search and rescue program to investigate the entirety of the pizza plex. I just happened to be the one who went into the maintenance tunnels first. Weakly, you pushed your head against his chest. Good. My sensors indicate minor blood loss. Thank you for not pulling out the object. We do have to make sure there won't be any infection. Fast entertainment recommendation is first aid treatment, followed by a visit to the hospital for tetanus shots. After signing an agreement that Fast Entertainment is not responsible for the injury or death that may occur from the incident. You chuckled darkly. <laughs> I know you guys sweep everything under the rug. Freddy looked at you with disappointment. Uh, I apologize. I don't make the rules. Quite literally, I am forced to follow them. I already filed a report, soon as I saw you lying there. You rolled your eyes. You are, however, free to do whatever you want, negotiations and all, if you'd like. I can summarize any necessary questions you need to ask yourself and your boss. You growl. Freddy, the needle is still in. My goddamn foot. Can we talk about that later? Uh, of course. He tilted his head. Honestly, you didn't care about pointing fingers. You really did not. This was mostly your fault anyways. If anything, you hoped in the case it gets infected, you'd get a few days off. Just to let it heal. Subject change confirmed. Mm. The weather, uh, am I right? You blinked irritated. What? Small talk topic number 21. Talk about weather. Uh, I guess the weather has been... normal. You shook your head, the action bringing another wave of pain. Ugh. I apologize, but I do need to ask how this happened. And I also am legally required that I have the ability to record what you're saying about the incident. With a grumpy face, you hit the bear playfully on the head. Okay then, I'm here, you asshole. Get the fucking bot to do this next time. Holy shit. Taking inventory is supposed to be the manager's job, for God's sake. Freddy blinked. Anguish. You should be happy, my measly place is enough for goddamn lawyer. Miss Secretary. And you know, what if you don't give me sick leave? I will sell my car, I will sell my home, just to, to soothe the ever-loving crap out of you. I, I don't think this is necessary. And by the way, I'm pretty sure I can get Brian to help me with this. And then, oh... Oh, then there will be fire under your ass. You know who Brian's dad is, right? Uh, is this all you'd like to file, Miss Secretary? Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, noted. You really weren't interested in a legal battle. And your manager was a very greedy man. 
it will most definitely let you take some time off if it meant that there was no legal payments he needed to do, or any public display that would tarnish the establishment. Especially after the fire. You sighed when you finally arrived at the nurse station. Such a relief. Gently, the animatronic sat you down. Do you know how to... <laughs> Do you know how to fix this? Suddenly, Freddy's eyes started glowing blue. Initiating first aid mode. First, the robot grabbed a bottle of disinfectant and rubbed it into his metallic hands. Then he dried them with a clean piece of cloth. After that, he took the needle with two fingers. Expectantly, he looked at you. This will hurt. A lot. Especially because of your shoe. You looked around the small room, but then decided to just pull out your belt. Quickly wrapped it around your hand, and then bit into it. Let's go already, you pressed through your teeth. With mechanical precision and speed, the robot pulled out the nail, while also taking off your shoe. The pain was overwhelming. Your desperate screams of pain echoed through the maintenance tunnels. God, you felt so pathetic. While you were busy sobbing and shouting, Freddy once again put disinfectants on his hands. Before he gently applied pressure to your wound with a cloth to slow the bleeding. It hurt. A lot. While the robot did his best, he still didn't have the nuance of a human. He either pressed too hard or not hard enough. But eventually you just accepted the more painful grip. You are doing great, Miss Secretary. You blushed and looked away. This wasn't the time to get flustered, goddammit. Next, Freddy turned on the nurse station's faucet. I'm going to wash it out now. I would suggest some, uh, perfect. You moved on your seat in a way that allowed him to access the water as he was talking. It was cold, but you actually kind of liked that. The soap he used stung, but it was better than nothing. How, how, how long are you going to wash it? Standard procedure demands ten minutes. Thorough cleaning. Ten minutes, you thought. By now your shock and pain was slowly being replaced by annoyance. Would you like it if I play you a song? You blinked. A, a song? Affirmative. I would like to break some of the tension that the incident has created. You rolled your eyes. Freddy... You gave up. Fine. Immediately, Freddy's music box sprung into action, playing a lullaby version of the Toreador March. You sighed in pain as you finally noticed the dried vomit on your blouse. With a hole near your foot, it probably wasn't a good idea to take a shower, but you really, really wanted and needed one. Maybe you could strap a garbage bag around your foot. Sound you smirked. It actually sounded kind of fun. By now, Freddy opted to investigate the inside of your hole. The bleeding had all but stopped. I have good news, Miss Secretary. My metal detector hasn't found any debris. However, I would still suggest going to the hospital, especially if any pus begins to leak within the next 24 hours. You squinted your eyes in disgust. Mm hmm. Pus. The word alone was disgusting. Finally, he applied antibiotic ointment, followed by dressing up the wound with a bandage. Uh, please do not apply any pressure to the wound. I shall carry you upstairs. When Freddy picked you up again, you couldn't help but deeply blush.
the wound on your foot reduced to a numbing sensation. But why was your body reacting like this now? It was so embarrassing. You had a weakness for strong men who took care of you. And apparently the fact he was a robot didn't change that. You sighed, and pressed against his chest to rest more comfortably. Might as well accept your feelings, right? <laughs> You're getting quite comfortable there. You growled. Uh, Franny, stop. The machine stopped walking. Concerned, he looked down at you. He opened his mouth to ask you if something was wrong, but before you could make even a single noise, you pressed your lips against his lower jaw. While only a simple peck, it meant an incredible amount to him. His senses were even able to pick up the soft feeling of your lips against the synthetic shell. And while he was used to gestures like this from the children, he rarely got a kiss from an adult. He looked at you with a strange expression as you blushed. D don't take it too serious. Uh, were you just experimenting? You huffed. <laughs> uh, I guess. Well, uh, what are the result? The result is I'm grateful. I appreciate you, and I like you. Freddy gently and protectively pushed you against him. I like you too, Miss Secretary. After you and Freddy left the maintenance tunnels, you met up with the night guard. Seeing your blood and vomit covered figure made him look at you with concern. You had dreaded this, but Dimitri, the night guard, just handed you a spare guard uniform in your size, before ordering Freddy to let you rest on his bed for the rest of the Russian's shift. In the morning he would then deliver you himself to a nearby hospital, so they can take care of you. The man was even nice enough to offer to talk to Amir in the morning. Who knew that the former military man, only known as Terminator, could be such a sweetheart? But, then again, he treated every human employee of the Pizza Plex like a member of his platoon. So he probably didn't do it out of pure sweetness, but rather conviction. Either way, you were fine with 